to Gershwin Woodcraft and today we're going to learn how to make the N.A. flute out of PVC pipe. Let's go check it out. The American flute is a unique design. It is a two-chambered flute. Now, traditionally they're made out of wood. Here is one that I made out of poplar, which is board. Another great material for this is bamboo because it's already naturally a tube shaped and because of the walls you already have a natural chamber system. But they are very complicated to make and there are lots of variables. So to start with, I always recommend people start with just a PVC pipe because that way all the dimensions are always going to be exactly the same and therefore the mathematics, which can get quite complex, are at least consistent. For today's project, you're going to need either a half inch PVC pipe with a half inch coupler or a three quarter inch PVC pipe with a three quarter inch coupler. You will need two files, one round, one flat, a three sixteenths drill bit, a cork, optional is a piece of rubber, and a block of wood to turn our final mouthpiece. The Native American flute is unique in that it uses two chambers to create the sound. Air coming through the front of the flute hits the cork wall we've put in. It is forced up through the speed hole and then angled across the sound hole. This is done by a cap which is called the bird. There is then six holes to control the melody, although in my design I only use five. I skipped the fourth hole. The exact spacing of the holes can be very complicated because it is a function of the inner diameter of the tube and its overall length. Since we are working with the consistency of a PVC pipe, I can supply you with the exact measurements for each hole, avoiding the complex mathematics. Okay. Now, as I say, we're going to do the half inch one. I put it in my jig. I do that to give myself a straight line so all my holes are centered and then I pre-hand it and I put all my markings. And now let's go to the drill press. Now remember this is a 3 16 drill. Now to create what is called the bird, which is the part that's going to fit over the channel of the air, we take the coupler and we slice it in half. Now you'll notice that the PVC coupler has this little seam in the middle which has to be removed completely flush in order for it to work as a bird. You can use a file, you can use sandpaper, you can use a pocket knife, whatever works for you. I actually have a sander that works great for me. And this allows me to get the inside perfectly smooth. We've cut our tubes, we've drilled our holes, we've made our bird. Now we have to build the channel that will send the air through. My preferred method is to use a Dremel tool and route a little channel. But if you do not have a Dremel set up like mine, another way is since it is a round tube, you can just file it smooth and that will make a natural gap in the tube. Or another method is to like take a little bit of a old rubber tire in a tube and create the channel that will then sit over it and create the channel for the air. But let's go forward with my preferred way with the Dremel. There you go. A nice clean little channel. Now you can take out some sandpaper. Okay. Now I've taken my same bit and I put it in a drill because I'm now going to take the two sides and angle them. So I'll come in and I go like that. And 
go like that. Now, now that I've angled it with the drill, I'll use my round file and I'll try and get that edge nice and clean. This is what's going to create your sound. The air is going to come through here, up through this hole, through this channel, and right across that sounding edge. Next thing we need to do is put in our cork. Now it's time to put in the cork. I've cut it down. You don't want to make it too thin so it wobbles. And you'll be able to see it past the holes and you want the cork to end right there, right in front of the sounding hole. To the first hole. Yes. Yeah. Well, we're almost done. We have our tube, we have our holes, we have our channel, our sounding edge, we have our bird. The only thing we have to do now is we gotta cut what's referred to as a little chimney to match that hole there so that the air goes through. Once again, I'll use my Dremel, but you can use a file, you can use anything you want. We've got our channel. You can use rubber band. I happen to have these tubes around. Let's give it a test. That's not bad for the first round, but it's a little breathy, which means my sounding edge is too dull. With the file, I will sharpen it and get a cleaner sound. If it starts getting too squeaky, that means the sounding edge is too sharp, which means I have to dull it a little bit. With a little effort, I'll find the happy medium and get a sweet sounding flute. You can further fine tune each note by increasing the size of each hole. Using your round tip file, you can increase the top of the hole, bringing it closer to the sounding edge to raise the note, or increase the bottom of the hole, bringing it closer to the bottom of the flute to lower the note. I'm really very pleased with the way this came out. It's a fun little project you can knock out in an afternoon. All we've done is the mechanics. The, fun, the real fun starts when you start to decorate it. I personally like to get a block of wood, drill a one quarter inch hole through it, put it on my pen mandrel, which I then use to turn a nice mouthpiece. Out of various woods, it gives it, you know, makes it a little bit more comfortable on the mouth. You can paint it brown, you could make it look like a wood, you can make it paint a day glow, decorate it with feathers, decorate it with stripes. I really appreciate you spending some time with me in my workshop. I hope you'll jo join me for other YouTube videos, and please check out my website, GershwinWoodcraft.com. Thank you.